Welcome to Great Loop Radio, brought to you by America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. We're dedicated to sharing Great Loop information and inspiration with those actively cruising, planning for, or dreaming about a Great Loop adventure. This is Kim Russo. I'm the director of AGLCA. Today is part two of our mini series on different ways that you can gain experience aboard and kind of try out the looper lifestyle before committing to the Great Loop and buying your own boat. So today we are going to talk a little bit about chartering and then a little bit about uh, Taste of the Loop Cruises, which is a way, um, just as it sounds, to kind of try out the looper lifestyle. So before we jump in and bring in our guests, I do want to take a moment to recognize and thank our Admiral sponsors who support the Great Loop at the highest level. They are Curtis Stokes and Associates, Passage Maker Trawler Fest, Skipper Bob Publications, and Waterway Guide Media. As always, we encourage our listeners to support these businesses that support the Great Loop. We're going to start today with a message from one of those sponsors. And uh, when we come back, we will jump right in with our first guest. Be back in a moment. Did you know that every mile of the Great Loop is covered by both the Waterway Guide and Skipper Bob? Use them to plan your Great Loop cruise and learn about the places you can visit. In the cockpit, important navigation info is always ready at your side, plus marina listings, anchorages, services, and so much more. Each Skipper Bob and Waterway Guide is updated yearly, and waterwayguide.com and skipperbob.net keep you current with navigation alerts, cruising news, fuel prices, and special deals. With the Waterway Guide and Skipper Bob at the helm, you'll always be on course. Order yours today at the AGLCA ship store at greatloop.org. Waterway Guide and Skipper Bob are proud sponsors at the Admiral level with AGLCA. I would like to welcome Jay Kraft. You know Jay probably from from Bay Breeze Yacht Sales. Uh, You may also know him as Trawler's Great Lakes because they are in the middle of transitioning from, from Bay Breeze Yacht Sales to Trawler's Great Lakes. So Jay, thanks for joining me today. You're welcome, Kim. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. And as I kind of mentioned in the intro, we're trying to give members and listeners some ideas. Um, we get lots of requests from people who are really interested in the Great Loop but have never owned a boat, at least of typical looping size, and really are looking for ways to assess whether this lifestyle is for them before they go all in and, and spend a lot of money on a boat. Um, and also are looking for ways to gain experience in boating because insurance companies are more and more requiring additional experience. So. We're going to talk about the charters that are offered through Trawler's Great Lakes, but let's start. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the business of offering charters. Well, it's it's a long story, but it's essentially summed up. I, I was a, a, a sailor and I really wanted to learn more about sailing. Uh, the local fleet in Traverse City uh, was where I, I gravitated to because I figured if you're going to learn about sailing, might as well go fully immerse yourself in it. And I worked for that company for about uh, 10 years through late high school and college, and then went out and got a real job (laughs) and then had an opportunity to own the company uh, in about 2000 and uh, became an ownership uh, partner in the company. Yeah. And so one of the things that Trawler's Great Lakes offers is charters. And we do get lots of questions about where can I charter a boat to kind of try this out. So Tell us about the boats that are in your charter fleet and, and whether that's kind of typical of some of the charter fleets you might find around the Great Loop. Well, I don't think it's very typical because we're just trawler specific only. That's all we do. And we are very fortunate to have a small but very uh, high quality fleet of boats. And I call it a fleet only because that's the best description to it. But we really only have five boats in the fleet. Mm-hmm. We've got a couple of American tugs. We have uh, uh, three Nordic tugs uh, that serve for the charter purposes, and then, and then the one boat is dedicated to the trawler school. Okay. Um, and you, we know you're on the Great Lakes. Um, you mentioned a little bit about that, but tell us, you know, are all of the boats kind of home ported in the same place for your charters? They are right here in Traverse City. Yeah, we're in the Centerpoint uh, Marina Complex, and that's where we call home. We have called home over 20 years. And that's, uh, it's a great place for us. There's uh, to exist. There's, uh, it's a commercial building, a commercial, private owned, but commercially operated marina. And uh, we've got great accessibility here, obviously by car, but also by plane too. So if we've got clients that want to fly in. So Traverse City is a great place if you haven't already heard about it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And what's the season typically there? Because obviously wintertime charters are not happening there. <laughs> For sure. Shorter than our southern counterparts, but we typically operate from mid-May to, we'll go as far as late October if, mm -hmm. if need be. We had uh, some requests for charters last year into, we were actually creating charters into mid to late October. We had, to, we had to shut it down. We had to put the boats away for winter. So, but yeah. we're pretty short season, probably five months, maybe. Yep. So tell us a little bit, you know, for typical charters, let's say someone's interested in the Grey Loop and hasn't really boated. Um, you know, what do they need to do to get hooked up with a charter boat? What kind of experience do they need before somebody's going to say, here you go, <laughs> take our charter boat with you? Well, we like to see somebody with, uh, you know, a well-qualified experience, but we know that's not a possibility. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's had previous ownership, uh, which is great, you know, we like to know what kind of ownership they had. And certainly if they've had previous charter ownership, and not everybody has it. And that's the great thing about chartering. So we've got a couple of different uh, alternatives for that. And certainly the captain charters, everybody's heard of a captain charter. That's one of them. Uh, and that is a, you know, the captain is the one who makes all the arrangements and has uh, all the burden of the responsibility to plan for everything. And then we've, we branched off into another part of uh, charters, which we think is going to be a, a, a popular one for those that, want to immerse themselves into the potential trawler lifestyle, a great loop lifestyle. And we've called that pilot charters. And because of our location at the base of the Lillianoff Peninsula, we have access to five marinas, which are within a 30 minute drive. So we can put people on a boat uh, that if they don't have any experience at all and have the pilot, the captain, bring them to Sutton's Bay, Northport, Elk Rapids, Leland, and we'll go get the captain uh, for the evening, take them off the boat. So the clients have the ability to just kind of stretch their arms a little bit and, and fully absorb the whole thing without having somebody on the boat. They have to entertain and feed and things like that. And then we bring it back the next morning and go to the next port. So they're able to experience the whole thing, but not have the full responsibility. But, you know, they have to flip some switches at night for lights and things like that. So there's a little bit of ownership responsibility. So in general, and we kind of, um, and of course, Trawler's Great Lakes is an AGLCA sponsor, and we very much appreciate your support. Um, sure. But talking a little bit generally about chartering, um, for charters that are coming with a captain, um, you know, is that typically, can you find that just about anywhere? Um, and what typically is the length of time, or is it completely variable for how long you would charter but with a captain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think most organized charter companies will offer that. They certainly do. Many sailing companies do, and we certainly do it specifically to our trawlers because it's a great option for people. The length of time really is specific to how much time these people have on their hands to go, how much time they want to invest on being on the boat. And with us, because we're small, we also have to look at the owners because most of our boats are privately owned and how much they want to use their boats and what time they have specifically set aside for that as well. So it's a little bit of a balancing act, a little bit of juggling act, but certainly if somebody wanted to, we have a couple of charters that are lined up this year already for uh, over two weeks uh, in length. So the length really isn't an issue. It's just what the boat is available and how much time the individual client, prospective client has that they want to invest being on the boat. And can you give us, um, if you can, uh, what people should typically expect to pay? Is it per day um, for a charter with a captain? So we don't do day charters. We break it into uh, groups of four days and then weeks. And we have made all of our charters, with the exception of the bare boat charters, all inclusive fuel, dockage, uh, transportation, all of that. And on the, for example, on the 34 Nordic Tug for a captain charter all for a, an entire week is going to be about $10,000. And that's inclusive of everything. So there's no ancillary cost anywhere for the, the individual or the charter party to come up. Obviously, it's going to be a little more expensive with the bigger boats, with the Nordic Tug 37, American Tug 395. It gets larger as the vessels get larger as well. Right. So sure. we can break it down, too. We can pull some of those costs out. But generally speaking, if it's a pilot charter or, or a captain charter, those expenses are all included. We just right. you know, want to put it all at one price. Yeah, absolutely. And that works well for many. Um, you mentioned bare boat charters. So for people who are new to boating and maybe aren't familiar with that term, explain what a bare boat charter is and what kind of experience is going to be necessary for somebody to do a bare boat charter. 
Yeah. So bareboat charter is uh, essentially is you're, uh, you are in full control, command and custody of the vessel with the, with the vessel safety and the crew safety, and there's nobody else on board. So you as the primary charter are going to be responsible for the vessel from start to finish. We have a fairly stringent requirement for bareboat charters because obviously we've got some very generous owners and we've got some expensive pieces of equipment on the dock. So we, we need to make sure that our bareboat charters are, are well qualified to be able to take the vessels out and bring them back without, without issue. Uh -huh. And we have um, a number of ways we can get people there if they don't have that qualification. But generally speaking, we're going to look for similar or equivalent experience on a vessel of the size that they're looking for uh, with previous ownership. And there's a lot of transitions from sailors to trawlers, as you well know. Yeah. So obviously if you have a, you know, some experience sailing, you probably have a fairly firm grasp on the basic fundamentals to pilot a vessel. Mm -hmm. We're still going to take somebody on a, on a check ride anyway. Sure. That, that essentially is what we're looking for. And can you give us uh, just a, a ballpark, you know, and again, an idea of what a bear boat charter might cost? Yeah, so the bear boat charter obviously is not going to be as expensive as some of the rest of the expenses on the 34. It's, I think, for a seven-day charter, it's $7,900. We've broken it down for the four days, and I believe it's uh, just under six. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the 37 is 8900 a week mm -hmm. um, and is just over half of that for a four-day yeah. uh, for a four day charter. So it's not inexpensive, but we've got some pretty expensive equipment on the dock. Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's a great option, as I said, for people who, um, you know, before they go and spend, you know, 200,000, 300,000, whatever that might be on a boat of their own, it's a great option to really kind of try it out. One for thing sure. we're asked, yeah, well, one thing we're asked all the time is whether uh, you can charter a boat to do the entire Great Loop. Um, or whether there's places to lease a boat to do the entire Great Loop. And we've investigated that. I know of one member who successfully completed a lease of their boat to another member, um, and it was a very unusual circumstance. So it's, it's very rare. And from what I'm told when we've checked this out, it typically is an insurance issue um, to have an insurance company insure the boat, um, partly because of the length of time most people take to do the Great Loop and partly because of the uh, navigation distance. Um, yep. So from what I understand, it really doesn't fall under normal chartering insurance because of that. So talk to us about for your charters, um, and I don't know if this applies to bareboat charters or captain charters or both, but for most charters, um, what is the the distance that you can take that boat that, that you've now, <laughs> somebody else's boat, how far yeah. can you drive that before somebody's going to get upset about it? great question you know because we have access to the north channel and other areas of interest for chartering and and that's all included in our policies because our our charter fleet is covered by a special policy that is great lake specific only and is tributaries uh -huh. anything beyond the tributary uh borderline is prohibited so quebec city for example is as far up st lawrence seaway as somebody can travel now we've never had anybody challenge us with that and go that far, but there are boundaries for our fleet, which are based for, uh, specifically in the Great Lakes and its tributaries. So for us to have a long-term charter to do the loop would be, uh, would not be possible because as you referenced of the insurance limitations, and, and that's becoming a bigger deal for sure. Uh, yeah, insurance. and the insurance issue in general is becoming a bigger deal because the, the market has gotten a lot tighter. Um, for a lot of our newer members who are newer to boating, um, you know, this is a fairly recent change that so many of the insurance insurers have exited the marketplace and with only a certain number of dollar yeah. value of insurance available, um, the companies have become a little bit more selective. So they're looking for people with more experience. So Chartering is another great way to gain some experience. Now, it probably would take several charters to get to the level that some of the insurance companies want. But, you know, talk to me a little bit about for those who do a charter, um, talk to me about how that's kind of building their boating resume, so to speak, and, and what can they put uh, to let their insurance company or, or potential insurance company know that they've had these chartering experiences. Right. Well, chartering for sure will bolster your 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 boating resume, no question, but obviously chartering without the experience is going to be a difficult, a difficult thing to obtain. There are some companies that have programs we do as well. Our trawler school is a way to obtain that information or obtain that experience to get started. But certainly the, the chartering element of it, um, you know, like we do and others 
there are captain charters and other alternatives to that to get you on the boat, to get your, your boating career started. And once you get started and get and start getting some experience behind you and put into your logbook, then you can, you, you can start chartering boats, bare boat chartering boats on your own. So, so chartering is really is an excellent way to build your resume, but also try to, as you mentioned earlier, if somebody's going to go out and uh, spend a lot of money on a boat, it's, it's rare to be able to charter boats like what we offer. Uh, and it's the, you know, the cliche is try before you buy, but it's very true. I mean, the cost of chartering is significantly less than the actual purchase price of the vessel. So many people find it a, a great way to figure out if a particular boat is for them or not. But, but chartering by far and away gets you to other uh, areas of chartering, other uh, cruising territories and tr cruising grounds, as well as getting your charter, or excuse me, your cruising resume built up for sure to present to an insurance company if ownership is in your future. The more experience, the better. And that's what insurance companies are looking for, no doubt. Yeah. And I think so there's, as, as you said, it's really two pronged at this point. It's a way to try out the lifestyle um, and it is a way to bolster that boating resume, so to speak. So um, great information, Jay with Trawlers Great Lakes. Uh, thank you again for your AGLCA sponsorship. We certainly appreciate that support. And thanks for sharing some of the details about chartering. I think you've probably opened a lot of eyes to how what to, to a new boater can seem like a daunting task is how to get started. You know, how do you jump in and figure out what to do next? Um, once you get your feet wet, wet with chartering, I think a lot more of it becomes clear. So Jay, thanks for sharing all those details with us today. We appreciate it. You're welcome, Kim. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the invite. You're welcome. Good morning, loopers. Many of you are probably already cruising in southeastern waters, and that is where the Salty Southeast Cruisers Net focuses all of its efforts to help you enjoy your time on the water. So as you prepare for the next leg of your journey, and as your resource for accurate, timely and useful information. We want to invite you to use and add your knowledge to the wealth of information that's available through the Cruisers Net in its directories for marinas, bridges, and anchorages, as well as the latest fuel prices in your area. Our mission of Cruisers Helping Cruisers, may we invite you to help those following in your wake by sharing with us your cruising experiences. Thank you. Have a great day. Welcome back. We are up to our second guest for today now, continuing the topic with ways to gain some experience with the Great Loop or the Great Loop lifestyle before actually going all in and purchasing your own boat. So I'd like to welcome Karen and Scott Duvall. They are capable of cruising. Karen and Scott, welcome. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and you've been guests before, but for those who maybe have not met you before, go ahead and start out telling us a little bit about yourselves and your experience on the Great Loop. Well, um, I'll start with the Great Loop. We were we did our Great Loop in 2016, 2017, and I was the reluctant spouse. For those of you out there, um, I now have my captain's license, so anything can happen out there. And congratulations um, so, on that. That's a fairly recent <laughs> addition for you. So congratulations. Yeah. So about six months into our loop, I was the one down here in Florida and looked at Scott and said. I think we have to continue on after we finish our loop. And so we have, we have done that. The, um, we did about 7,000 miles on our loop and uh, did side trips to Nashville and Chattanooga, Bahamas. And so we did a lot of little extra things as well. And um, Scott's favorite spot was the Georgia, Georgia Bay, Bay North and mine was the Bahamas. And our seconds are exactly the opposite. Um, so, um, capable cruising is, uh, we do onboard training. We do taste of the loop cruises and deliveries. So that's what we do as a business. And we're going to talk today about the taste of the loop cruises, since that's kind of, you know, in line with our topic of how do you try this out, um, while you're gaining experience and deciding if this is really for you. Um, so tell us, what made you start capable cruising in the first place? You finished your loop. Um, if I remember, you you uh, sold your looping boat and had a little bit of time frame in there where you were boatless. Um, so how did that all evolve, and where did capable cruising come from? Um, well, the day we sold our boat, um, our good friend and broker, Michael Martin, uh, he knew we were looking to do something. He says, you know what you should do is onboard training. 
so that's where the idea of cable cruising came up is the onboard training. Uh -huh. um, our first, one of our first clients were out on the ocean and decided instead of buying a house that we were going to buy another boat. Uh -huh. <laughs> and during that time, we, 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 we found out that uh, there was a need for these cruises. A lot of people were asking for something like this. So we, we bought this boat with that idea. And uh, after jumping through all the hoops, we were able to uh, start doing the cruises. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that you do, um, and, and you do training as well aboard your boat or others' boats, but the Taste of Loop cruises are aboard your boat. Um, so tell us about your boat, because you did buy it specifically with this in mind to make it comfortable for you and your guests. So what kind of boat is she? Uh, where is she home ported right now? Well, we're, we're home ported out of uh, Fort Myers. Um, and uh, for those of you that are not boat savvy, we call it our two bedroom, two bath. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Meridian 408 and it does have two staterooms and two beds. So it's, it's perfect for doing the Taste of the Loop cruising. We have a stateroom in the bow for guests, and then we have the um, aft cabin for us. So there's plenty of space in between for people to feel comfortable when they're aboard and having their own space. Uh -huh. So, you know, we usually keep the podcast fairly non-commercial, but this is a pretty unique service. So, um, you know, while we try to talk in general terms, usually about services available, this one's kind of unique, so it's hard to talk in general terms when there's not much else out there that we know of that are like this. So, you know, tell us what, Taste of the Loop is a great name because it describes it right there, but kind of tell us what, what folks can expect if they were to come on board for this type of cruise. How long is it? What are the experiences that you run them through in that time period? Well, typically a cruise is a minimum of four days. Um, and when they come aboard, we usually have you arrive, the clients arrive at seven o'clock the night before we actually start cruising. We just get to know each other a little bit. And the next day we do a safety review and off we go. We're off cruising right away. Um, we typically like to do things like stay at anchor, go to marinas, we do dinghying, we drop the dinghy, we show you that experience, go and view places, um, private beaches, and. <laughs> we also do things like uh, go over the systems on the boat, engine checks, the basic operations of the boat. Um, one of the things we like to do is, since we've owned two different style of boats, uh, kind of give the, the good and the bad, the plus and minus of each style, and uh, different things to consider when purchasing it, before you purchase a boat as well. All right. So it's not quite onboard training because that's a different offering. But it's also not a charter because your guests are really not passengers just along for the ride. It's really kind of a, a immersion into the looper lifestyle. Um, you know, are they passengers aboard? And, and you know, I, I'm not talking about from a technical chartering and all of the insurance yeah. and things that go mm -hmm. along with that. But they're not just along for the ride, so to speak. They really are kind of learning about looping in the boat. Right, you know, kind yeah. of tell me how that works. Sure. And we, you can be as involved in the, the day, the operations of the boat as you want. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we originally started the Taste of the Loop thinking it was going to be just more um, a pleasure type cruise, but we found that our customers really wanted to take on as much training as possible. And they wanted, they were, they're hungry. They want to learn as much as they possibly can. So we kind of let them gear how they want their cruise. It's their cruise, so they can do with, do as much training as they want. And and honestly, we're finding they, they want, they're hungry, they want to do everything they possibly can. Mm -hmm. And um, so we do go through the whole boat systems and um, towards the end of the cruise, we do a thing called, you know, just going through um, things to consider when you're buying a boat. And we don't try to guide them either way, but um, our last client said, I didn't know how important ice was on a boat until, I, <laughs> until we spent a time with you. Oh my gosh, that's now on our must-have list. So we, we help them to maybe define their must-haves and nice-to-haves and when it gets to buying a boat. And they've seen a lot of these systems now. So when they get on a boat, it's not just a bunch of stuff down in all that they don't know what it is. Right. And that's a great point because they're, you know, if you're new to boating or have, you know, have only had, uh, you know, smaller kind of runabouts, 
you don't realize things like the importance of ice until you've act, and it's not even something you would think to think about. Um, and that's, that's one example, but there's lots of those, you know, on a boat. Um, you don't think about the ease. Um, none of us is getting any younger and, you know, things like the ease of movement, um, you know, whether any stairs are true stairs or more like a ladder um, until you've actually been aboard and spent some time aboard and see where you struggle and see what's unexpectedly easy. So it's a great opportunity for people to kind of try it out. You mentioned the shortest is four days. How, what's the longest you can do on a taste of the loop? We've done as many as seven. Yeah. And so typically we do four or five. I mean, that's what most people are looking for. Um, the fit, usually when they add a fifth day, it's to do a lock experience. We're fortunate to be in Fort Myers, which is beautiful cruising grounds, but we're just a short trip away from the first lock on the Okeechobee waterway. So we also have the opportunity to add a day and do a lock experience. So we get to go through the lock a couple of times and, and see what that's all about. And that a lot of people seem to have, I think the three fears we sometimes see is too much. They're worried about the small space on a boat They're and they're worried about the motion of the boat and they're worried about um, locks. the locks and those get dispelled very quickly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I hear a lot of worry about um, anchoring as well, if it's something people yes, haven't done particularly yes, overnight. So, so, and you anchor overnight as part of the experience. Yes, yes we, do. we do. So you can, they can kind of get experience as the peacefulness of that, but also, you know, mm -hmm. how to dispel some of the worries about going to sleep while you're at anchor and, and all those kinds of things. Um, I think most of our clients really were surprised how, um, how great anchoring was, which is, you know, they're like, oh, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. it's easy, in some ways easier than a marina. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell us if, if you can, um, you know, what is the taste of the loop cost? And you can be general if you'd like, but um, I think, you know, uh, people are kind of wondering, is this charter price range? Is it not, you know, tell us if you can what the costs are at, right now. Okay, um, our, our four day cruise is $4,000 and um, any additional days is just $1,000 more. So it's basically $1,000 a day each day. And then um, that is all, we call it our all inclusive <laughs> cruise <laughs> because it does include food, drink, you know, uh, everything that they need to have on board. So they don't have to be concerned about being nickel and dimed in the end, so. Well, and that actually is part of the experience as well is, is, you know, how do you cook a board? You know, things are the same, but different. Um, so th different things to consider. So um, I know you've been extremely busy with this. It's been a pretty popular offering. So how far in advance should people who might be interested in this be looking to book? Well, at this point, we're looking about six months out, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a couple openings in later this year, this calendar year, but we've already got quite a few bookings already into next year. So anybody who's thinking about it should get on the books as soon as possible. We had a, quite a long waiting list for this year. And we, we don't do the cruises here in July or yeah. August, just because of the heat, it's just oppressive. It wouldn't be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Well, um, you know, both with captain's licenses now, Karen as a once reluctant spouse, any advice you can give to, you know, some wannabe loopers who maybe are, are sitting at home watching this and are either struggling to find a boat because the market is so, um, you know, devoid of boats for sale right now for the loop, um, or perhaps trying to figure out how they can gain experience. Some of this is seeming unsurmountable to some of the people we're talking about are getting frustrated with the situation with trying to find a boat. Any, you know, advice to them on what they can do to get ready for the loop while they're waiting? Just continue to, um, I call it boat porn, look at boating, <laughs> uh, uh, things online, uh, get your boater safety, uh, get that. Uh, that's always a, a good thing to have. Yeah, build your resume. Um, any that time you've maybe bare boated in the BVIs or anything like that, or have had a previous boat, Try and put together anything that you have experience in doing. Um, and when they're done with a cruise with us, I send out a letter that says that they spent X number of hours on a 40-foot cruiser. And whether that helps with insurances or not, I, I'm not sure. But um, everything is going to help. And um, just being comfortable 
um, knowing that this is what you want to do. And that's why we're doing these cruises, because I think that is, it's a big step to maybe leave work and, and buy a big boat and, and commit a year of your life to something like cruising. Um, so I think that these cruises fill that that need, yeah, yeah to for yeah. people to know. So, all right, Scott and Karen Duvall, Capable Cruising. Thank you for joining us, and thanks for your AGLCA sponsorship. We very much appreciate that. Um, we'll look forward to welcoming you back soon. Well, all right, it's our again. pleasure. Thank you all very right. much. And for those watching and listening, thank you for joining us today. We will be back next week with another episode of Great Loop Radio. Until then, safe cruising.